just like that sort of uh, simpleness, simple quality about it. When I was little, I knew my Uncle Jay was in a band, but uh, I didn't know much about it. I didn't know that they were really famous or anything. I guess the concept for the new album really is more uh, pretty organic. And in terms of a title, I, I have a tentative title of Redberry Lake because I thought of that about a year ago. I had a cabin out at this place called Redberry Lake. And I had a painting I'd done that I kind of liked, and I sort of put the two together. And again. Cosmic pad. I think they're getting a kick out of being here, you know? We drove out in the country and took pictures of dust. <laughs> I'm really not expecting anything other than to make something that I'm really happy with. So here we go. Ready? Okay. Songs will become what you make them. There's no... Sometimes it's kind of predestined, you know? Teen Land wasn't going to be a huge sweeping statement about the state of the world. It was going to be, you know, about... I, it was actually the seeds of it were from a high school, really, and I really started, when I think of it, that's when I really kind of started writing it and just feeling like a bit of an outsider, you know? Jackie T, Lonely House, Teen Land were all kind of guitar riff songs or bass riff songs. I mean, Teen Land's like, you know, it's like... It's, it's kind of spy music, you know, it was how it was. And lots of space, just a straight drum beat in the groove. Just more of a workout for your wrist if you're playing the bass, you know, with that kind of, you know, that, you know, that dissonant kind of seventh thing. And Jackie T was once again a, just a guitar riff thing. It was like that. Sort of based loosely on riffs from the police or uh, I don't know who else. That kind of twangy, but always more country. We always had our more. People always thought of us as a little bit country at, the, at that phase because, you know, or the beginning of Lonely House, which is like. Just sort of pretty little melodies, you know, and it's. That one I still like. I just, I, I just, well, I like all of them, I guess, in their own way, but I just like the way Merle delivered the vocal on that. It was kind of a good one. Jay was, you know, such a driving force behind the Pikes. I mean, he was the guy that was writing songs at the beginning, and um, it's hard to kind of take his songs uh, in a in a different context. Like they're always going to be kind of Pike songs, um, but there are certain songs that uh, are maybe a bit. Um, Bit more introspective that maybe are Jay Semko songs that that maybe wouldn't fit into a Pikes album. Then a few I don't know a few years ago he put out one of his own CDs of his own songs and I thought that was really cool. Also one of his singles Strawberry Girl that I think that one's a great song. I just like how it starts out with this guitar and then he just comes in it sounds so good. Strawberry Girl was sort of, I guess I can't really say it's based on a true story. It started off as a true story and then ended up being a, just a, a nice fictional love story, basically. And uh, Strawberry Girl, I mean, I, I just love strawberries. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, and it's just like, I just love that riff. It was very much thinking like, I don't know, Gordon Lightfoot or... You know, there are other people that have that, those kind of riffs, and it's just a fun riff to play. It's a kind of riff you can play all day. I sort of like the, the friendly quality of that picking and I, a lot of my music when I'm playing on my own I tend to do that sort of arpeggiated kind of picking like that. This is, this is going to be my second solo album and it's taken me about nine years <laughs> to get into this again but I guess you know that's the way the road leads sometimes and I mean this song is kind of like phase one of getting the ball rolling again. I'm really trying to come up with something very organic on this album, very natural sounding and very honest. Uh, we'll have to see where it takes us. I mean, Level Set You Free is the, the first of, who knows, 10 or 12 songs. I have a number of songs written, dozens in fact, but it's just a case of filtering through them and seeing what makes the grade for this particular time period. So I think the song is a good setup for the whole album because I really like that it's a positive message and right now I'm feeling pretty positive about things. I'm feeling pretty good about, about my life musically, my life personally. Things are all right. Cosmic pad. Oh, not bad. Yeah, it's a bit bad. Yeah, it's a bit bad. You know, 
I've I've always wanted to have a recording studio. I I mean that's I think probably one of my strengths is uh, uh, producing and knowing what works in a song. I don't know if it's from listening to a lot of music or or just it's maybe it's a talent that you have. I don't know. Ross adds a major force to what I'm doing. I consider him a co-producer and co-arranger on everything that's going on. You know, and sometimes he becomes a co-writer too because we'll end up taking it to another place and. He adds something that I think is is pertinent to the to the song, and it's he becomes a co-writer on that. So I mean, yeah, it's great. I really enjoy working with Ross. I can't see at this point working with anybody else. It just seems like the most natural thing in the world to me. Well, "Love Will Set You Free" is like uh, I, I've always looked at it as a kind of a nursery rhyme. You know, <laughs> I keep referring to things as a nursery rhyme just because it's simple and there's this mm, mm, "Love Will Set You Free," just like that sort of. Uh, simpleness, simple quality about it. No frills. I tried to keep it not too chordy. I have lots of songs with like nine million chord changes, but this one I just wanted something mellow that, and I guess the whole idea behind this song is like, look, when life gets crappy, it's like there's always some element of love in your life, whether it's your a romance, romantic attachment or, you know, your connection, your spiritual connection or uh, just in general, you know, loving nature, it doesn't matter. There's there's a positive quality that can always be found there whenever the things get you down. Get up in the morning, another day of living. Sometimes it's a treadmill and it feels like you're in prison. The sun shines always on your shoulder when it rains. It kind of has a, it's like a, like a, you know, Johnny Cash thing or something. It's, it's kind of like that. You know? It's supposed so to sound like that, you know? simple, you know. I ran out of breath and you were standing there saying, shh, my love will set you free. See, the picture I have is the girl sings that. I don't sing. Oh, this is the duet one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she comes in in the <clears> harmony <throat> on the bridge. It's a bit, you know, Kenny and Dolly, but I think it'll <laughs> kind of work for this, you know what I mean? Like, it's like... Okay. That's what's going to give a charm to me. Yeah. That's going to take it out of a more drony, low register voice, you know. So, so if she that, sang, she'd, she'd be a third. She, that? yeah, she'd be a third or a fifth above that song. and doing a full solo over a verse instead. Do you like that better? I would say cut that solo in half and then do half the verse. I just feel like it's maybe too desperate to say like it feels like you're in prison. I mean, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not that bad. <laughs> you live in Canada. When I was singing at that time, I sang a different lyric just out of the blue. And it's better. For sure. It's better here. Instead of knew I was stolen, uh, something the sky was falling. I thought that was just 